Hello, uh, my name is Alex Norte and um, I'm a researcher here at Tallinn University of Technology. I hold a PhD degree from um, uh, TU Eindhoven in the Netherlands. And today I would like to talk to you um, about a paper which was recently published. So um, uh, the paper has the title a Reference Architecture for Managing Dynamic Interorganizational Business Processes. And it was published in the Data and Knowledge Engineering Journal, which is not such a bad journal. I have two co-authors. One is um, uh, Professor Paul Greven, from, also from Eindhoven, uh, who was my former supervisor. And then uh, Nanshangut Narendra from India, from Cognizant Technology. My talk is basically just a wrap-up. Um, of the most important figures of the introduction and then I encourage the viewers to uh, look at the paper themselves. So let me get started with the first figure. The first figure um, shows um, conceptually a typical scenario for a supply chain um, based collaboration. And uh, it has on the top uh, as a capstone the original equipment manufacturer Let's assume maybe somebody tries to build um, a truck or another um, scenario could be that there's a financial service that is complex that maybe a leading bank uh, tries to put a complex financial service together or maybe in, modern, in a more modern setting you have an ICT company, uh, maybe a travel agency that um, um, puts um, a travel package together for customers that comprises um, um, flight booking, hotel booking, um, uh, insurance and so forth. So um, a supply chain in that sense uh, must not necessarily be tangible. A uh, supply chain uh, we understand more to be an information logistics issue which can optionally involve um, tangible elements. So if we look at the figure one uh, we see an original equipment manufacturer, if we now stick to the case of truck production, uh, that is an original equipment manufacturer and um, that uh, capstone company is responsible for engineering um, and um, machine and plant construction. Then on a tier one, uh, you have systems and module suppliers um, that are involved in additional logistics and tooling Tier 2, um, you have component suppliers that uh, could maybe even make IT services or to stick to the case of a truck production um, would have, um, uh, would, would produce cylinders and so forth. And it goes down to the lowest tier where you have uh, companies producing raw materials and standardized parts. The question is how to uh, meaningfully automate that and uh, before you move into any type of um, of um, automation, you should really think about a suitable architecture for this type of um, scenario. Um, but in order to get there, um, the uh, collaboration scenario from figure one, we first translate into a collaboration model, which is depicted here in figure two. And in figure two, you have in the center a so-called external collaboration level, where you have service offers uh, from service providers projected and uh, that needs to be matched with service demands or service requests from service consumers. Um, the service consumers have on, on their in-house conceptual level a larger business process, likewise the service providers, uh, but the um, uh, service uh, providers have um, in this larger process so-called spheres which they um, in a targeted way project to the external layer as service offers. Uh, so you could imagine there's some sort of um, collaboration hub, some service, service hub, which is like an electronic uh, marketplace um, where service uh, providers and, and um, consumers are semi-automatically or fully automatically matched with each other, uh, depending on um, some smart uh, algorithms. S services on the external layer, also the service provider backs up uh, in in house with a larger service provision um, process actually, and uh, these processes can be expressed as electronic services. 
Um, now, the thing is, if you look at uh, figure, figure one, you will see that on the side of the service provider, that uh, actually the in-house process is much larger. So we have additional steps uh, that are hidden. They only exist on the internal layer, but the counterpart to the service consumer does not see them during enactment or setup time. Uh, the same holds for the uh, service consumer. Everything that is outside of, of, the, of the sphere that gets projected uh, is not um, visible to the service provider as a counterparty. That way it is impossible to have uh, privacy assured. So we also see um, legacy systems layer where you would actually have um, your standard ERP systems, production systems, CRM systems and so forth wrapped as web services that become uh, orchestratable uh, by, by the, by the in-house services. So based on that, uh, we deduce um, a life cycle of collaboration. I mean, if we, if we take the, the static uh, model, collabor collaboration model, and the life cycle is here conceptually depicted once again in figure three. And figure three uh, starts uh, as point A with uh, a conceptual formulation of these processes. <clears throat> now the processes on the in-house layer, they need to be mapped onto the uh, legacy system layer for orchestration purpose. And at the same time, um, we uh, employ a broker uh, where service offers and service um, uh, requests are deposited and then in a smart way matched with each other. Um, so for that, we need some projection of services to the, to the external layer. And um, on the broker, we then have a step E, uh, a bidding going on. So depending on, on the power constellation between uh, service uh, consumer and one or many service providers, um, they can bid, have requests for quotes and information, requests for all sorts of things uh, that they then try to, maybe in a little game theoretical sense, um, um, bounce against each other until in a negotiation process, they match their services. So once they're matched and we're heading for a collaboration configuration, we need to, on the one hand side, verify certain perspectives in a collaboration uh, configuration. Uh, the most dominant one is assumed to be the control flow, but we also have other perspectives like uh, resource and information flow, uh, transactional exception management and so, so on. Um, so you can uh, verify with means of algorithms um, separately these perspectives, but Still, once you, um, you run these perspectives together uh, during the enactment process, uh, things can still go wrong, which means uh, there's also um, a need for simulation. So if, if something goes wrong, uh, you need to just uh, fix whatever problems occur and you need to maybe even go back to a negotiation step uh, until you have um, a sound collaboration configuration. So then during, uh, during runtime, uh, you distribute basically the processes and you try to shield the in-house legacy systems, uh, which you then tie in for orchestration purpose uh, uh, into the collaboration configuration and then you start to enact. Uh, basically, the transaction is concretely carried out. So in the case of uh, the financial collaboration, this could mean um, companies would, um, would then carry out um, a financial complex financial uh, package would be would be carried out in a transaction or maybe in the case of car production or truck production uh, a concrete engine would end up uh, with the original equipment manufacturer and the latter would pay then uh, for the delivery so from there we can deduce a set of functional and non-functional requirements uh, it would go too far now to discuss those here Next, uh, figure four um, shows then how we develop uh, this reference architecture in this concrete case. Uh, on the right side, four, uh, 4B, we have the standard way of developing reference architecture where practitioners from industry get together and uh, develop um, some standards and reference architectures in a bottom-up way that then get approved by organizations like OMG, IEEE or um, ISO. But on the left-hand side, 4A, figure 4A, this is how we uh, developed um, uh, the reference architecture in this paper. And uh, we basically employ formal and conceptual knowledge to develop the architecture, uh, which is also based um, employing styles and patterns uh, of good practice. And from there, employing the domain knowledge, uh, it's then possible to develop standard architectures for specific industry, let's say for finance or for production or for ICT, telecom and so forth. 
um, with further contextual details that could then be broken down to concrete architectures for some specific uh, clusters, industrial clusters within an industrial domain. Now let's move on to the highest level of, of, of the actual architecture and um, I will uh, I actually encourage the, the, the viewers to then go to the paper to see the rest. So conforming to the collaboration model we have three layers, the external layer uh, with the so-called e-sourcing middleware to set up collaborations and in the middle we have um, a trusted third party where services, service offers and requests are deposited so the trusted third party is for the for the matching during the setup time. Um, then we have on the conceptual level, um, which is by the way replicated, uh, I omitted here for space uh, purpose, but uh, the translate and the e-sourcing setup support uh, on the conceptual layers are also replicated in every collaborating uh, party. And uh, the translate uh, basically translates um, between the external and internal layer, um, data exchanges of different format because we have a very heterogeneous uh, s system landscape here. And the e-sourcing setup support um, comprises tools for designing processes, rules, for assembling them, for verification and so on. And then at the bottom, at the internal layer, we have the legacy management component, um, really for the orchestration of, of the legacy systems as such as ERP systems and so on. Um, this architecture proves to be quite useful um, with, um, for, for e-governance scenarios as well and also for cloud computing where we uh, need to set up platforms um, for collaboration, uh, let's say also for cyber physical systems that evolve Internet of Things uh, that could be applied for smart cities, for border control, um, Industry 4.0 and so on. So this is the wrap up um, of the five figures, uh, there are many more, uh, the paper has like 40 pages and uh, I would encourage uh, people to take a look and if you have any questions please contact me, my name is very easy to uh, find in search engines and just drop me an email, thank you very much.